love the Easter bunnies and I love all the eggs and the candy and the celebration, but I love Jesus more than all of that. And it is so good to celebrate him today. So have you accepted Jesus into your heart? Yes. Do you declare that you will serve him all the days of your life? Yes. Do you renounce the devil and all his ways? Yes. By your public proclamation of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you renounce, do you reject, do you say no to the devil in all his ways? Yes. So good. Okay. All right, by your declaration of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Rihanna, and because it was time, I just felt like it was time. Amen. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you de publicly declare you will serve him all the days of your life? Yes. Do you renounce the devil in all his ways? Yes. All right, by your public declaration of faith, I now baptize you. Scoot up a little bit just a hair. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, tell us your name and why you'd like to be baptized today. My name's Ashley, my husband's out there, my two kids, and this is a declaration of faith in front of them. And I just, I felt like I saw all of my shame from my whole life being buried in this water today. <laughs> I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Tell us your name and why you'd like to be baptized. And how cool is it to be baptized right after your daughter, right? It's amazing. My name is Bruno, and I'm here because my wife keeps insisting that I come to get baptized. Where's your wife? Wave, wife. Oh, there she is. She's insisting. Well, you know, wives know best, they say. So have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you publicly declare you will serve him all the days of your life? Yes. Do you renounce the devil in all his ways? Yes. By your declaration of faith, I'm going to baptize you. Let me give him the mic. And I do baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. By your public declaration, of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> By your public declaration of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm Joshua Paredes. I've been coming here for eight years, and I want to be renewed in the Lord. All right, you ready for this? Yeah. You're going to come out a new man. <laughs> he said, great. <laughs> <laughs> By your public declaration of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These waters, man, oh, let me tell you, Israel wasn't free when they got released from Egypt. They were free 
when the enemy was passed through the waters of the Red Sea, right? God baptizes us in those waters, but they also baptize the enemy in that water. But we're the only ones that come up. Amen? Wow, love it, love it. 2,000 plus years ago on this, this day that we celebrate, everything changed. And just a few days before the great resurrection of the king, the devil, demons, the Pharisees, and religious leaders, they celebrated his death, didn't they? The devil, in this moment, now believed he had the upper hand. The religious leaders, on the other hand, were totally clueless to the fact of who Jesus was. They bought into their own lies that he was just an insane man, but one who could single-handedly turn the entire nation of Israel upside down. So even though they didn't believe him, they knew how powerful he was. Even though they saw his miracles, they didn't believe him. They saw his love for the people, they didn't believe him. They saw the healings and heard of the dead being raised, they still didn't believe he was who he says he was. They saw demons being cast out. So for them, his death was not only a time for celebrating, but for relief. We finally got him. Man, what a total miscalculation. <laughs> Let me just make, see this side note too. The enemy and his demons have no hold on you. They have no power over you unless you willingly give them power. You have been bought, paid for, sanctified, redeemed, restored into a son and daughter of God. That's who you are. It's like the story of Smith Wigglesworth, great evangelist who's lying in bed and he feels his bed being shaken. And it's moving all over the room. He wakes up. This is a true story. He wakes up, he sees the devil shaking his bed not a demon, the devil. And knowing the power of God that resides in him, he looks at the devil and says, oh, it's just you. And then you know what he does? According to his writings, he says, put the bed back. It's the power of the risen Lord that lives in you. With you on his mind, I want you to know how Jesus would have died according to medical professionals. Suffocation, loss of body fluids, and multiple organ failure. The weight of the body pulling down. Now this is Jesus on the cross now after he's been whipped, beaten. He's on the cross naked. The weight of the body pulling down on the arms would make breathing extremely difficult. The heart and the lungs would stop working as blood drains. It would be draining through the wounds. The upright wooden cross was designed for the most serious criminals. Someone nailed to a crucified uh, cross would be have their arms stretched out on either side and they could expect to live no more than 24 hours. Seven inch nails would be driven through their wrists. This was done purposely so that the bones of the person could support the weight. They did it so that they wouldn't die immediately, but they would suffer through it all. This nail would sever the medium nerve. This caused excruciating pain and also had another effect. It caused the victim's hands to become paralyzed. This is your king. The feet were nailed to the upright part of the crucifix so that the knees were bent at around 45 degrees. Th to speed up death, executioners would even uh, would often break the legs of their victims, giving them no shot to use their thigh muscles as support. As your king hung on the cross, one of the legs would give out. The weight would be transferred to the arms. Or once the legs gave out, the weight would be transferred to the arms, gradually dragging the shoulders from their sockets. The elbows and wrists would follow a few minutes later. By now, the arms would be six or seven inches longer. The victim, 
Jesus would have no choice but to bear his weight on his chest. He would immediately have trouble breathing as the weight would cause his rib cage to lift up and he would be forced into a nearly perpetual state of inhalation. Suffocation would follow. And the famous final words of Christ on the cross, it is finished and he takes his final breath. All the while you are on his mind. And so the demons and the devils, they rejoice, and the Pharisees rejoice, and the earth moans. And for three days, for three days, victory was thought to be on the side of the demonic. But as they say, Sunday's coming. He is risen. And they look in the tomb and they see it's empty. They run back and they tell the disciples. And the Bible says two of the disciples run. And they look and they go into the tomb. And they see an empty tomb. And they see the clothes that Christ had been wrapped in. They're just lying there and there's a folded head. It's what they would cover the, the dead's head with. So they would put over the head, they would put this, this cloth or this head drift over and the, as they buried them or as they put them into the tomb. And for some reason, this was not just on the ground, but it, it was folded and separate in a corner or somewhere different, the Bible says, from the rest of the clothes. See, in Hebrew culture, this actually meant something. So, when the master of the house was having a dinner, or he was eating, he was having a, a, a meal, he was feasting on good things, he would sit down, he would eat, and he would ha have his napkin. And as he's eating, he would wipe his mouth and he would talk and he would converse and he'd have a relationship with those. He'd... And then if he got up and he left the napkin unfolded just like this, it means he's done. The servant would then know to clear the plate. But if the master was not done, Hebrew tradition tells us he would fold his napkin and he would set it down. And that told the servant servant he's returning he's not done and so when the disciples go into the empty tomb and they see the folded napkin of our risen savior it wasn't just that he's risen it's that he's risen and he's coming back for his people so you can be assured that the folded napkin means that Jesus is coming again to come for a pure and spotless bride. Come on, he is risen. He is risen. Come on.
remember every time you see a folded napkin, be reminded that he's coming again. He's coming again. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just bless the Lord with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you have come and you have healed us of all disease. Thank you, Jesus, that you've cured us of all depression. Thank you, Jesus, that you've defeated all anxiety. Thank you, God, that you have brought us wholeness. We love you, Lord. We're so grateful. We just say thank you, King Jesus. Thank you, King Jesus. Man, have you guys had a wonderful Easter? Have you guys had an amazing morning? God is so good. I'm so grateful for the presence. And guess what? You can stay here and linger in it as long as you want. As a, as a matter of fact, I just, if, if you want to, I just want to I want to open the altar to you. I don't want to force you out. The altar is open. You're more than welcome. But if you are leaving us today, we just want to invite you to our Wednesday night services. If you haven't joined us for one before, we're here every Wednesday at 6. We have our youth, we have our kids, we have a place for your adults. My wife and I, we get to serve as the young adults leaders, amen? That's so awesome. You have a place here with us. If you're here once, you're family. No ifs, ands, buts about it. I don't care how you feel when you left. You can be like, I don't like that church. You're family, we love you. You are so welcome here and we appreciate you, amen? So once again, the altars are open. Don't feel like you have to rush out. If you're in a spot and you're like, I just want some more of Jesus and I'm burning, you're welcome here. We love you. Can I bless you? And then we're going to get out of here. Amen. Lift your hands with me. God, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for the friends and the family we get to celebrate with. We thank you for this amazing freedom in you that we get to enjoy, Abba Father. And it's because of the sacrifice that you made and it's because you rose again. Today we agree with the victory of King Jesus. Everybody just say victory. victory. Come on, victory belongs to our King Jesus. Victory belongs to our King Jesus. So we bless you, Lord, and we bless your people. Thank you for all of our comings and goings. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Encounter Church, happy Easter. Love some folks before you go. And go eat some good food. And remember the altar is open. We love you. See you Wednesday.